Yeah, I've fought this one before. I have fought this one before. I should be fine. Oh! <laughs> yes? G'day Ziggy D here, and today I want to share my thoughts on the new 4 month Hardcore Challenge League, Invasion. No doubt you've seen plenty of death videos, including mine just then, and uh, probably, if you've been playing Invasion yourself, experienced plenty of deaths and near deaths and pretty scary situations yourself. Chris has always said that he wanted to uh, he wanted to develop a league or a race type or something like that where everyone would be dead by the first beach. And uh, this is probably his finest work yet in that regard. Uh, the Invasion League is easily the most dangerous of all of the hardcore leagues, most challenging ever, much, much more challenging than the previous ones, and more challenging even than a lot of the different race types uh, that we've experienced as well. So. Pretty uh, props to props to our GGG in that regard for making something truly, truly challenging. So basically, for those of you guys who are a little bit unfamiliar with it, invasion is essentially uh, two things. You get uh, in each random zone, you get uh, extra random invading mobs that aren't usually present in that zone. So you'll see a lot of things like leapers in zones that they wouldn't normally spawn. I see a lot of beetles, and you know you'll sometimes get some extra things like larger skeletons and stuff appearing in just just other sort of random zones. So what this means, this has an interesting effect, is we're kind of used to, even like the hard, serious hardcore players who like are kind of used to racing and leveling really fast, we're used to knowing exactly what challenges lie in each uh, different zone. So, we uh, stack fire resist when we're going into crematorium, we stack cold resist when we're going to fight Mervale, you know, we stack lightning resist if we're going into chamber of sins. All well and good, you can sort of push your character much harder uh, with this sort of game knowledge. However, with Invasion League, that kind of throws it out the window. Although you can still do that a little bit, you kind of always need all of your resists uh, sorted. You always need to be kind of aware and safe because uh, going into each new zone, you don't know if something that deals ice damage is going to spawn in Crematorium. You, you, don't, you don't know if that's going to happen. You could get Arctic Leapers in Crematorium. There's nothing to stop that from happening. So... Progression is just much slower and much more cautious as a result. And uh, I think people jumped straight into Invasion League expecting to go as fast as they normally do, maybe a little bit slower, and uh, ripped repeatedly. I did myself, I'm up to my uh, fourth character now. I, uh, I died once in Act 3 Normal, I died once at Level 2, <laughs> and then I died another time in uh, Act 3 Cruel, and now I'm back uh, in Act 3 Cruel on another character. So, uh, plenty of people have been in this situation, I've seen, like, a lot of the other streamers have been ripping constantly as well, so... If you've, uh, died a few times in Invasion, don't worry, it's not just you. But, uh, so we have to, like, you know, readjust this. I think it's a much slower place, uh, paced sort of progression, and I really like this. It's really cool to see that, after a week, people are only just sort of, like, trying to take on level 68 maps, and struggling with those like crazy. And the bulk of people aren't even at endgame yet. Like, usually the majority of people hit endgame by the end of a week. Like, that's like the average player base. Like, all of the really hardcore players, they reach it in the first few days. And then, you know, like, day two, day three. And then everyone else sort of catches up around the week mark. But it's the bulk of players are nowhere near endgame yet. I think the bulk of people are probably, like, in Cruel, Early, Merciless. So, uh, that's pretty cool. I like that. That's good. Leveling gear, you can sell leveling gear, it's awesome. <laughs> but uh, there's just like a uh, really kind of high turnover rate of players, and uh, including my party members as well. If you've been watching the live stream, you'll probably see a lot of uh, party rips for me. But uh, that's really awesome, I really like that sort of thing. So the second part of Invasion is the bosses. So there's this new Invasion bosses. And uh, you get one of these in each zone, and they're usually tied to the base type that, of mob that spawns, but I see some differences sometimes as well, so I'm not exactly sure how that works. But uh, they're pretty randomized. Some of them are kind of like harder versions of bosses you've fought, or harder versions of mobs, or they're a little bit more difficult. They have a few interesting challenges, a few interesting mechanics. They use some new skills in the game, and they use uh, things like invulnerability auras, and, you know, lots of different uh, stuff that you kind of... Skills that you know, but not used to on those mobs. So they're a bit of an extra challenge. And then some of them are just deadly. They're just so deadly. Like, I encountered, you know, there's certain ones you just kind of know to run away from. There's uh, Rima, who's uh, a, uh, a sea witch uh, creature that throws traps. Uh, I've died to her, and uh, she's one that you kind of want to just, like, leave as soon as you see her. There's this black uh, flicker-striking EK spider, and uh, I encountered that earlier in recording the footage for this video on my EK shadow. And uh, that's another one you just kind of want to avoid, you just want to get out of there. And there's also like a tentacle miscreation, I know that's killed Colby Cheese like four times, and uh, that one's incredibly dangerous, it uses a, uh, a very, very high damaging kind of uh, 
te like tentacle rain sort of ability that can off screen you and kill you very very quickly so uh some t completely brutal bro bosses in there and uh probably a bit on the overtune side overall but uh the good news is that chris uh or ggg have said that they're going to be uh toning down six of those different bosses so there's six they've picked out as being uh too overtuned or too difficult and a lot of the really the really bad ones are getting toned down a little bit and uh adjusted to be a bit more manageable i guess but overall the bosses are really really punishing and they don't really drop anything so this is kind of like in line with the the design theme of the different leagues that GGG puts out. Like for example, uh, the first kind of set weren't the best example, but let's like take a look at the last set we had um, in the softcore league. We had uh, exiles that in anarchy in anarchy we had uh, exiles that would give you loot. The, and then the hardcore one was onslaught. Actually, that was the first set. So the hardcore one was onslaught. The first one was anarchy with exiles. You kill exiles, you get a big boost of loot, big loot pinata, and that's the reward. So there's a risk, and then there's a reward. Then with onslaught, it was just everything was faster and you know faster attacking and fast moving. Risk, no extra reward. The second one was uh, the same sort of deal, like a uh, risk for reward in softcore and a, and a risk with no reward in the second one. And this new one is the same, the same deal, even further uh, sort of along that spectrum. So the uh, the lockboxes in uh, Ambush currently are like a bit of a risk, and then you get a big loot explosion, and some of the loot's really amazing. And then with the hardcore leak, we got the uh, new invading monsters making things more difficult, and the invading bosses that are extremely difficult for very minimal reward. Like they drop about equivalent to like a rare monster or something like that. So in terms of their design like decisions with previous leagues, this makes a lot of sense that the bosses are quite unrewarding. And uh, to me, it kind of yells out this idea that I actually kind of like of knowing when to pick your battles. People are saying, you know, what's the point of playing the game if we have to avoid all the monsters, if we have to avoid the bosses? Like, what's the point of playing if we just have to run away? And uh, knowing when to pick your battles has always been a thing in hardcore. And I think this is like, this is GGG highlighting that. They're like, they're going to put some things in there that you should be afraid of, and you probably won't want to fight. You probably should know when to run away and when to fight. Know when to pick your battles. Like for example, uh, Nemesis taught us to be aware of different mod combinations through the Nemesis mods, and this one's teaching us when to pick our battles and when to know when to run and when to know when to fight. And uh, I think that's, that's a pretty good design. It's a pretty good design idea. But I think the majority of people will want this reward for the bosses. So I'm hoping GGG do uh, revisit the boss drops, make them a little bit more, just like closer to like piety or something like that. Like the difficult bosses should maybe pick some of the bosses drop a little bit more, some of the bosses drop a little bit less if they pick some of the easier ones, some of the more difficult ones, or just give them all like, you know, two rares worth of, two rare mobs worth of drops or something like that. So just sort of double their drop rate a bit just to give them a little, little bit more of a loot explosion so you feel a bit, you know, better when you finally manage to take them down. Because just in terms of challenge, like like for killing them just for the fun of it, for the challenge. That's pretty fun like the first couple times, but after that you kind of need that reward incentive as well to keep you going and to keep you fighting those mobs. And without them really dropping anything, there's not too much point. They're just something to uh, either TP away from or to uh, Quicksilver away from if you can. Some of the mobs just flicker strike you down and you can't you can't Quicksilver away. <laughs> But uh, overall, I think the design idea is pretty good. There's going to be some tweaking needing to be made. There already has been some tweaking. I think there'll be some more. And uh, hopefully we see a bit of an increase in drop rates and some of the uh, one-shot ones sort of toned down a little bit. But uh, overall, I'm really happy with how difficult Invasion League is. And uh, the expansion pack overall is really good. I'll talk more about the uh, like the different corrupted zones and the vile orbs and things like that in future videos. But for now, I just wanted to talk about my thoughts on Invasion League. I'm also really hyped to try out Ambush. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Uh, people were, like getting gems strong boxes with a bunch of quality gems and stuff like that and the whole crafting of ambush lock boxes sounds like a lot of fun so i'll be getting into that too but anyway that's my thoughts on invasion that's it for now i'm ziggy d and thanks for watching